Hello everyone, and today we're going to be having a look at the third installment of the Buster Blader Tenyi deck on the channel here. Every time this deck has come back to the channel, it has been more powerful than the last, and this is no exception. I believe that this is going to be the optimal way of playing Buster Blader. Uh, I've not seen any other deck profile uh, that anyone else has been using that comes anywhere near this one in terms of outright performance. It is a perfect balance of power, consistency, breaking power going second, uh, interruption and floodgates going first. It's got a decent ratio of hand traps. It just flows together so, so nicely. It is very similar to our last uh, installment of the deck, but people who have watched that video will, will notice a couple of very key differences. Uh, I'm going to cover them all in detail towards the end, as well as go over a number of the new sort of key combos that now exist within this deck. I dare say you've seen them before with other types of decks. They're fairly staple combos, but I'm going to explain the uh, nuance and the minutia of how they integrate themselves so well and smoothly into this particular deck. So if you enjoy the gameplay and do watch the gameplay, I'll be showing a bunch of different matchups here and it will very uh, acutely describe and display the power of the deck. Uh, but if you like what you're seeing here, our take on classic decks or even some of the more modern competitive decks, feel free to subscribe. Uh, it's completely free. You get more content and I get more support. So it's a win-win. And if you have any requests, suggestions or anything like that, by all means, you can jump into the comments and leave them there. Uh, you can also, if you want to contact myself directly or speak to any of the other members of our small little community here, you can always hop into our Discord server, which is open to everybody. And the link to that is in the description below. So feel free to hop in there and send me a wee message whenever you want. But having said that, we'll cover it in more detail at the end. We'll cover off all the minutia, but for now, enjoy the gameplay. And again, we'll cover this back at the end. All right, so here we are getting into game number one. This one's gonna display just pure Buster Blader. We draw all of the traps that we needed. We just sit free and pass. Uh, very, very Dark Magician-esque. Now we're holding off on using any of our traps until usually we do in the draw phase, but we're gonna use Destruction Sword Memories to discard a Buster Blader card to summon out Buster Blader from deck. That means we can put the trap card in the graveyard without needing to send it from the deck to grave. So we can send the Whelp from the deck to the grave of our prologue. Prologue summons out the Buster Dragon. Uh, our memories will summon a Buster Blader. Memories in the grave will banish from the grave to Fusion Summon and bang, there you go. There's your full combo. And luckily for us, we managed to discard the uh, Whelp here then. So now he can't use his extra deck. All of his face up monsters are negated. We try to maxi here as well, expecting him to special summon a few more times, but no bueno. He hits us with that call by the grave. So that is what it is, but ultimately we're not worried. He goes for Long Juan here, discards the Ashuna to summon it out plus a token, but he can't use his extra deck and all of his effects are negated, so we don't care. Now I can see where he was going, uh, what he was going for with this. He was trying to use the Vishuda's effect, I would imagine, to bounce one of our two monsters, but he can't link summon using this because he's locked out of his extra deck. He doesn't have anything to tribute over it in his hand, so it's just stuck there. Uh, and this is going to be a quick one here because we're going to use one of the effects here of the Buster Blader himself. It doesn't get used an awful lot. Uh, where you get to send an equip card from him to the graveyard to destroy all monsters your opponent control of that type. Now because we're sending a dragon, all of our opponent's monsters are dragons, thanks to the Buster Dragon. Uh, we would just nuke his board. He realizes what's going on. Even if that was a blackout that was set on the field, it wouldn't mean anything. Uh, he would still be getting just he would still be getting destroyed we had too much follow-up but yeah super straightforward i hope that was a good showing of just how the buster blader engine works you just set three you set whatever it is you have you just pass in your opponent's turn you then flip up your traps lock them out of the playing the game and a win from there so that was a good matchup against uh sword soul which again top deck in the game at the minute uh, so it's always nice to see uh, Sword Soul getting a wee bit of their kickback at them then. So let's get into game number two. All right, getting into game number two here. We're going second this time and we will be playing against Tri Brigades, which again, one of the top decks in the format. So we're going straight from number one onto potentially what is the second or third most powerful deck in the format. Luckily, we do have Ash Blossom to stop his Fractal from sending the kit. He does have Liralusk Bird Call in hand, which can send the monster to the graveyard, so he now has the materials for his Fractal play to go into a Harpy Conductor. 
Harpy Conductor then is going to summon out his Samorg, which during the end phase is going to summon out from his deck the Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds, which means neither player can special summon monsters except Wind. Now we don't play Wind, so what we're going to do here is first use Pot of Prosperity. We're going to get Ash, so he's going to negate our Pot of Prosperity. So what we're going to do here is we'll Chain Droplet, we'll send the Pot of Prosperity that is currently face up on the field, uh, to, to the graveyard so that now we can negate that barrier statue so we're free to summon as much as we would like uh, so now we're going to normal summon out our jet synchron jet synchron is going to go into link Karibo. jet synchron then will discard a card to summon itself back to the field so that link Karibo and jet synchron go into verte anaconda another real big benefit of using jet synchron over deskbot 001 in this particular version then we're going to fusion summon out into our destiny hero destroyer phoenix enforcer and wipe out that samorg uh, we'll use its uh, Destiny Heroes effect to wipe out itself and the Barrier Statue so we can get another 500 attack here across the land, why not? And we also have our Prologue set. Unfortunately, we don't have a Dragon in the Graveyard, so we can't go into the Buster Blader play just yet. Uh, but we will be setting up for it here. Now, our opponent puts us in a bit of an unfortunate situation where we have to preemptively make a play, basically. Uh, whenever we pop the kit here, uh, he's going to send a Nerval. Nerval is going to get searching, so he's going to add Karas. Now, we were gambling on whether or not that last remaining card in his hand was a Beast card, and it was not, so the gamble paid off. During our standby phase, our uh, Destroyer Phoenix Unfortunate will come back. And during the main phase here, we're going to set one, use Celestial to draw two here by banishing the Destiny Heroes from the graveyard. We're going to use our two monsters now to go into Crystron Haki Fibrax. This is going to give us the dragon that we were missing for our combo pieces to let us use the Buster Blader cards, but it wasn't even that important because our opponent decides to quit early. So yeah, again, that shows the outright power and synergy of these other little staple engines alongside Buster Bladers. There's no valid, powerful, or consistent engine you're going to play alongside this that is going to more consistently put the materials necessary in the graveyard, uh, unless you're going to run like an all dragon deck, in which case you still need to mill the, the trap card somehow. Uh, so it isn't, isn't consistent. It doesn't necessarily make the deck more consistent. But yeah, uh, being able to get easy access to your uh, whelp using any of your tuners, basically, and then any effect monster, to go into your hacky fibrax is what makes up the difference there so yeah very straightforward game shows the uh synergy of the other engines in the deck now let's get into that game i mentioned against the ching ying and you're gonna see what i mean in that particular matchup all right getting into game number three here we're going first and our hand isn't great but it also isn't terrible pot of prosperity here uh, he's going to hit us with Max C off the bat, which looking at our hand, we're not all that worried about. Uh, we are going to use Pot of Prosperity to check the top three cards of our deck, and among them, we're ma we managed to hit a Whelp, which is perfect. Uh, Whelp, Normal Summon, then we'll grab a Prologue from our deck. We're going to set that face down alongside our Droplet and end turn. The reason we didn't go into Link or Evo here was, one, we banished it accidentally, and two... We didn't necessarily want to give him the draw and we can send the whelp to the graveyard off of droplet so it's not as if we don't have a way to put it there he's going to special summon out his vishuti here and we preemptively pop our droplet to make sure this guy goes to the graveyard if he link summons into the monk and then uses vishuti's effect to bounce one of these cards and he hits droplet that means we won't be able to put the whelp in the graveyard uh, which will put us in a very rough spot so it's unfortunate that we have to pop it early but we you do what you have to do he goes in the Monk of the Tenyi, and he preemptively goes for Vishuda here to return the other card, which is great for us because we can chain our Prologue, get sending the Trap card and the Buster Blader to the graveyard, chain the Memories in the graveyard to Fusion Summon, and that is pretty much the combo. Uh, memories will summon out the Fusion Monster here by banishing materials from the graveyard, so we get our Buster Blader onto the board, and our uh, Prologue will grab the Buster Dragon, so now all of his monsters are dragons. Now, an important thing to note is the Buster Blader doesn't negate the effects of dragons on their field. It makes their effects non-activatable. So the Ching Ying is still huge and it can still protect itself from destruction. It just uh, isn't allowed to banish cards after the fact. So it isn't. So that's the only effect that really we're stopping here. Uh, now, it doesn't happen very often where your Buster Blader is not the largest monster on the field. So in this situation, we actually have no out at all like in our entire deck we did not have a single way to out that card certainly not in a playable situation there 
Uh, so we have no choice but to concede. Uh, and this is the exact duel as to why we put the Red Dragon Archfiend into the deck, because in that instance, we would have been able to summon out the Red Dragon Archfiend with the Buster Dragon, negated Ching Ying's effect, and swung in and took them out that way. So we would have had counterplay, which is why he is now in the deck. But yeah, again, shows the power resilience of the deck, trying to keep up with the likes of Sword Souls and Tri-Brigades. Every duel so far has been against a top tier deck. Uh, so that's grand. We're going to move into one more game here. And if you're not a fan of New Grunge, you're going to love this last game. Uh, it's just going to show off the real sort of surprise factor of the deck. All right, getting into game number four here. We're going first and we have a really good hand. Uh, we normal summon out the Welp, uh, to which he's going to chain Max C. I'm just glad it wasn't an Ash Blossom. Uh, we do plan on special summoning a couple of times at least this turn. Uh, so we, we decided better to just stop him from drawing cards. We don't know what he's playing yet. Uh, so using the Welp, we're going to search for Prologue. We didn't really have anything else good worth searching. We're going to use Fusion Destiny here. Now, we did misplay slightly. We should have gone in the Link Karibo first and then used Fusion Destiny. But what can you do? Here we are. We set our two cards and we pass. So, you know, we're looking pretty solid. We're going to have an easy time getting into our Buster Blitter plays. And we also have the uh, Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer. Now, he goes for Twin Twisters here. So we're going to chain our Prologue of Destruction. Now, we can't use the Memories in the Graveyard just yet. But we can put the Buster Dragon on the field but our opponent has Raigeki so even if we did do the full combo it wouldn't have mattered in the slightest Raigeki just out your board immediately he goes into his Numeron network summons out his four monsters so we're thinking all right he swings in and he has limiter removal so that's pretty much game over that's 8,000 attack on board not very much you can do about that except we now have a dragon in the graveyard so memories is alive on the last attack we're going to then fusion summon into the destroyer uh, dragon destroyer swordsman so he cannot finish us off this turn he's going to go into uh the chaos gate sunya so at the beginning of his next turn uh, he banishes our whole field and at the beginning of his next turn we take 3000 damage which will finish us off so we have one turn to win this game but that's all we need using dasher's effect we can special summon out the drawn jet synchron and our destroyer phoenix and Porsche comes back we normal summon the effect veiler to go into chris drawn hacky fibrax uh, hacky fibrax is going to summon out the uh, busted well from the deck we'll use celestial in the graveyard to draw two cards so that we have something to discard for jet synchron's effect so we'll summon him back out to the field and go into our Aurora Dawn. Aurora Dawn, when summoned, is going to summon out three Mecha Phantom Beast tokens to the field in defense. Three tokens at level three each, plus one level one tuner, gives us Baron de Fleur. So Baron de Fleur will pop the field spell. Without the field spell, when his Sunya comes back, we don't take any damage. We have the DP, we have like 7,600 damage on board. We could probably done a little bit more uh, to push for a lethal that turn, but we didn't even have to. Our opponent had seen enough. The Sunya would have come back and done nothing. We had an Omni to get on his turn. We had a free pop on his turn. He only had a couple of cards left to even play around with. So that was well and truly game over. Really, really fun game. Honestly, Numerons has to be one of the worst decks in the game, in my opinion, in terms of its uh, interaction. Like, I understand people don't like Sword Souls, people don't like things like that because they're super powerful and top tier, and I get that, but at least you can play against them. With Numerons, it's not even, it's it's not a game, it's not a duel, it's just, do I have the cards in my hand to break your board? If yes, then I win. If no, then I surrender. And it's just, there's no, there's no interaction. I'm just not a fan of that deck, so I'm always glad whenever I can get a good replay of us kicking it to the curb and showing it where it belongs. So that's going to wrap it up for the gameplay. Again, a very good mix and balance of Buster Blader action and top tier uh, splashable engines, uh, all working in tandem with one another to make sure the deck functions. So let's get into the deck profile and I'll explain it all in a little bit more detail. All right, so having a wee look at the deck here, what we're going to do is break it down into digestible little segments here and we're going to make this fairly quick. We do have a couple of other videos on this deck, so do feel free to check back to those to get a good read on how the deck works so we'll tackle the buster blader stuff first again this deck is sort of split into distinct parts uh buster blader so this trap card here this is your entire buster blader engine everything revolves around this card this card special summons your buster dragon out to the field from your extra deck and this is what makes all of your opponent's monsters dragons 
because when they're all dragons, the dragon destroyer swordsman negates and switches them all to defense. So that's the core play. And this is the card to make it happen. So how does it work? It will send basically a Buster Blader and one of your Destruction Sword cards from your deck to the graveyard to summon out the Buster Dragon. So what do you need in the graveyard? You need three pieces in the graveyard to do the full combo. You need the Destruction Sword Memories. You can banish this from the graveyard to Fusion Summon. You will need the, the Buster Blader, which you will send off Prologue, and you need the Whelp. Uh, and the reason you need the Whelp is because you need a Dragon in the graveyard as the second material for the Fusion. So those are the three cards you need in Grave. Prologue gets you two of them, not three. So you need to have the third one through some other means, hopefully by just drawing into your whelp and getting it that way. Alternatively, the way the deck is built, there is a number of different options for getting into that play. So that's how the Buster, the Buster Blader engine works. You have three copies of this, three copies of the whelp, which when normal summoned will grab the prologue from the deck. You have Trap Trick, which uh, will basically search out your prologue on your opponent's turn. So you're essentially running nine copies of Prologue and then you're running three Pot of Prosperity to try and draw into those pieces in addition to your players. I think that was in one of the games that we displayed as well. So that's the Blister Blitter engine. People are running a whole bunch of extra stuff to try and uh, augment this further, which doesn't work like the Siege and Mausoleum plays work great for lower ranks if you want to keep a quote unquote pure. But if you want to be competitive and if you want to win games and go on win streaks, claim up ranks, you need to play it uh, in a fashion similar to this. You need to drop those dead cards, those uh, sort of one-to-one -one combos. They just don't work out. Uh, you can play a card like uh, one for one in this deck if you really want to. Uh, again, it can grab the Buster Weld from the deck as well. It's probably a very good card to play. You can probably drop Maxi down too. Uh, and it can also grab at horror and things like that, I suppose. So, you know, maybe one for one is a very good card. Uh, I wasn't testing in this particular version, but feel free. So that's the, the Buster Blader side of it. Uh, now the Tenyi side of it. The Tenyi side of the deck is literally just here to go into your link place. So they are to facilitate either A, the augmentation of fields that already have the Buster Blader materials set onto it, or B, to compensate for when you don't have that play set up and ready to go. So you're not always gonna have Prologue set and ready to use, but your deck still needs to be able to play the game. So how do you do that? you use your 10 use. You can special summon them out to the field if you control no effect monsters. If you have two of them in hand, you can special summon one, link summon in the monk who's a non effect monster, then special summon the other. That's two monsters on board. Uh, why are we running the ratios we're running? Uh, we basically want to have as much variety as we possibly can because you can only special summon each of them by name once. The best one by far is at Hara because it's a tuner and that's the only reason, just because it's a tuner. Uh, these ones here are level fours, which is very useful because you can just normal summon them in addition to your uh, special summon if you need to. So these guys I think are definitely better, but Vishuda and Ashuna still have a place. So I'm basically playing one of each of them except for Adhara, which is at three because it's very important. Uh, and that's pretty much it. They're just here to link summon. And why are we running Adhara three? Why do we care so much about tuners? It is for our Crystron Haki Firax. While these guys, the other Tenyus, are will allow you to go into Predaplant Verte Anaconda, and Jet Synchron is also a one card Verte Anaconda uh, to go into your DPE. Add Hara and your Whelp, and those types of cards in combination with your Tenyus will allow you to go into Crystron Haki Fibrax. Uh, your Haki Fibrax will summon out Jet Synchron to go into your Aurora Dawn. Aurora Dawn will summon out your Baron de Fleur. So you could be ending on a board that has DPE, Baron de Fleur, and your Buster Breeder plays or Buster Blader plus one of the two. Typically, it's one of the two. Uh, so it just adds a lot of versatility to the deck, a lot of follow-up and staying power as well. Sometimes you go into your DP play and it's just not enough. And a lot of other Buster Blader decks just run out of gas at that point. They've got no plays left. They've used all of their resources, whereas this deck doesn't have that problem. It constantly has another play to go into. Uh, so it, it doesn't suffer those same sort of setbacks. Uh, you can also, of course, use your hand traps as a substitute tuner if you need to normal summon them to go into it. So that's always very, very powerful. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. The deck itself honestly isn't all that complicated. Uh, you're just special summoning out your link monsters to 
uh, your effect monsters, sorry, to bring out your link monsters, which are standard for a lot of decks in the current metagame. I know people may not want to look at Baron de Fleur and DP, but if you want to play a rogue deck and you want to do so uh, with any intention of ranking up through Diamond, and that's what we do here. We don't mess around. I know that last video was a bit of a mess around, but for the most part, we take this quite seriously. We want to win games and we want to do so using our favorite cards. Uh, so if you want to win using Busted Blader, this is going to be the way to do it. Uh, and the rest of the deck basically is just hand traps, board breakers, max C because it's broken, uh, effect veiler because it's a spellcaster tuner, and it's it's quite good at stopping sword souls in particular. It's a, it's a good uh, counter to sword souls. It's a tuner which means it can help you go into hack fabrics. Uh, Ash Blossom, it's a tuner, normal summon it for the health play, plus it's pretty damn strong. Uh, Droplet, Droplet is becoming one of my favorite cards. You saw it in the gameplay, it is really really good going second of just sort of stopping your opponent needs their big boss monsters that otherwise can't be targeted or destroyed uh this would be the dex former only out to something like Ching ying but you can't you always draw into it it's handy when you have it not so much when you don't have it uh but yeah in regards to the extra deck most of it is just core your buster blader and your buster dragon of course you need dp you need baronda Fleur you need Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss is purely here as an additional negate, plus one one of your tuners and your Buster Dragon will summon it, and it's here to stop the likes of the Supreme Sovereign Cheng Ying, which otherwise this deck really struggles with. Uh, Link Karibu, because you can turn your Buster Whelp or your Jet Synchron into a one card combo. Uh, Monk of the Tenyi for your Tenyi plays. Uh, core. IP Mascarina is not necessarily core, but IP Mascarina and Mech Knight Crusader Avramax are a very, very powerful combo. You can potentially replace these with the likes of Unicorn and Access Code Talker if you want. These two in particular are not core, but I am a big fan of that of this particular combo. Uh, the Protector Whelp will basically, when summoned, send one of your uh, Buster Blader pieces to the graveyard, so it helps just make up for a missing combo piece. Decent fallback play. Uh, Aurora Dawn's core to the uh, Tuner combo. Credit Plant Vertean uh, Condos Core, Avramax we already talked about. So very straightforward. It looks complicated. I, I know I'm shedding a lot of information at you here, but when you're playing it, it is very, very simple. Do you have this trap card? Yes equals you have Buster Blader. No equals you don't have Buster Blader. You don't need to worry about any sort of fancy combos or extension past that. It is a yes or a no. Uh, when it comes to the rest of your cards, it is you're usually just deciding which do I want, Baron de Fleur or uh, DPE and if your worst problem in life is deciding between Baron de Fleur and DPE then life's going pretty well for you at that stage so that's my current deck on Buster Blader I can't at this moment think of any ways to improve it again you don't need to play one for one you can play Maxi as well uh, although one for one seems like a very powerful card in retrospect I can't think of any way to improve upon this massively as it is. I think if we are going to try and improve Buster Blader, we're going to have to stray away from the Tinyi engine to think of something completely new. But I doubt we'll be able to think of something more powerful than this particular version. So that's my thoughts on the video. Again, uh, jump down to the comments, leave your recommendations, suggestions, criticisms, uh, your favorite color for all I card. Just go down. Uh, get a discussion going about something and subscribe while you're down there just so you get notified about any further content coming out and I get a bit of support from you as well. So everyone wins basically. But yeah, that's all I have to say on the deck then. So I'll see you all in the next one.